Hey, what's going on, family? Uh, real quick, I just want to bring out this quick video about this Megan Williams incident that happened. Because what it is, is it relates to the so-called falsely labeled hate crime, falsely charged hate crime that was done in Chicago, which was a case of self-defense. And I might, after I talk about this case, I might go back and talk about why that was self-defense at the end. But anyway, let me uh, get into reading this article about what happened. Basically, to give you guys a preview before I start reading the article, she was a special needs black girl who was kidnapped by six white supremacists who engaged in white the white supremacist traditions of torture, rape, murder, humiliation, and domination. Okay? Um, it's 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 a tradition to the white supremacists they've been doing this for decades and they've never stopped it's, it's a tradition like christmas we, we were celebrating christmas 100 years ago and we celebrating christmas now it's, it's a tradition we don't stop just because times change we'll probably be celebrating christmas 100 years from now for most people i mean obviously people have different religions and stuff like that but as far as it being a national holiday where most people are off work and all of that we're probably going to still be doing that if America's still a nation and hasn't burned to the ground by then. We'll probably probably be still having Christmas off most people, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Well, murder and torture and and and, and being demonic is like Christmas to the white supremacists. OK, except they can have Christmas every day because they're in power like that or at any moment they feel like it. They don't have to wait till a certain time of the year. So anyway, I digress. Let me read this uh, article for you guys. One second. I'll pull it up. Okay, here we go. So Megan Williams thought she was going to a party. That's why she tagged along with a woman she hardly knew. Now let me stop there, okay? One, do not ever, and this is the slow, so I'm not even saying this for her. Obviously, first of all, this is hot. This is 2020 hindsight for her anyway, even if she wasn't slow. But this is not for her, obviously, because she's she's slow. That's kind of why she ended up in that position in the first place. But us black people who are not necessarily, quote unquote, slow can be slow at times, especially when it comes to white supremacists. Let me say something to y'all. Do not and I said this in another video, in that video where I, uh, where, uh, where I talked about the sister Charlo Green and uh, you can't do what white people do. I talked about how uh, I do dabble in marijuana sometimes, but I would never tell a suspected white supremacist that I do that. I would never take any offer from a, a suspected white supremacist to smoke with him anywhere. OK. I would never admit to it. And I talked about that in the video. You can't do what white people do. All right. And that relates to what I'm talking about here with her. Black people. You really shouldn't be hanging out with white people at all, period. You should minimize contact with them. And I'm serious about that. You should minimize friendships with them and contact with them. Only be fake in the ways that you have to be to survive because this is a complete system of white supremacy and you can't get anything you need without going through the white supremacists. That includes business owners because the white supremacists can, can shut down your business anytime they feel like it. That's just the reality. But so I understand that we do have to interact with white people on some level because this is their world. OK. But on the levels that we don't have to, which means friendships, associations, relationships, all that extra shit. No, it shouldn't be happening. But even beyond being friends with them, let alone someone you don't really know, do not ever put yourself in a position to be hanging out with some white supremacists, especially if you're the only black person. I don't give a damn how cool you think they are, how friendly you think they are, especially if you do not know them, even if you do know them, but especially if you hardly know them. Don't ever agree to go to no party, go to no suspected white supremacist house. You need to be just as scared of them. You need to be just as scared of 
going with them alone as you would be some nigga with dreadlocks trying to take you to the projects to hang out with him. Which a lot of you coons are probably scared of that. You need to be just as scared of that. Uh, of the prospect of danger of some of some thug in Chicago wanting to take you to the south side to hang out with him in the worst part of town. You should be just as scared of these white supremacists as you are of a black man who you perceive to be a thug. And that goes for black people because I know how we think. I know how we think about each other. But anyway, I digress back to the article. That's why she tagged along with a woman she hardly knew up a remote southern West Virginia hollow to a rundown trailer surrounded by cans and broken down furniture. But there wasn't no party, Williams said. I realized I made a bad mistake. For at least a week, authorities say the 20 year old black woman was kept captive in a shed, tortured, beaten, forced to eat rat, dog and human feces and raped by six white men and women who taunted her with racial slurs. OK, I want to stop there again. Understand. And this is what I talk about with the white supremacist psychology. OK, family and how sick they are. You want to have sexual intercourse with someone who ate feces. Now, of course, I'm not saying that she ate feces on her own will. Obviously, don't be a dumbass, please. I'm not saying that she ate feces on her own will. But you made her eat feces. Now, that's one thing. OK. I understand that you're a psychopath and you want to humiliate her by making her eat feces. But it's, there should be a dividing line. If I want to humiliate someone by making them eat feces, that's a disgusting act, whether I made them do it or not. I don't want to touch on or have sexual intercourse or be be intimate with someone with shit breath. And I'm listen, it's a turn off in real life to be having sex with someone or be intimate with someone who just has a, a stink mouth, not because they literally ate shit, but their mouth smells like shit because it's not properly brushed. Right. That's disgusting for a normal person. This girl was literally made to eat shit and you still wanted to have intersect in intercourse with her. Of course, that was forced too, but th that tells you how disgusting they are. That also reminds me of what I was talking about doing slavery. White people claim black people were on the level of animals or cattle, right? They claim that black people were three-fifths of a human and could be treated like cattle or property. They were no different than a horse, a pig, a cow, or a chicken. But they were still having sex with people who were on, on, with living beings who were, who were animals in their eyes. Why? That was more proof that the white supremacists engage in bestiality. Somebody who you see as non-human, you want to have sex with. That's why, of course, I can give examples of them having sex with actual animals, not people who they perceive to be animals. But that's just proof of how disgusting they are. You're sitting here calling them an animal, your property, an animal. They're just like an animal. That's why you have the right to own them. But you're having sex with them. Because you are a, a, admitting and that goes for all of our presidents who owned slaves and saw them as animals yet wanted to have sex with them. That you're that you're admitting that you are willing to engage in bestiality. It's the same thing with this with with this sister. You made her eat feces, but you want to sleep with her or, or have her perform sex acts on you with her mouth that she had uh, feces in. So you want fecal matter in, in your genitals, on your genitals. Anyway, family, back to the story. They just kept saying, this is what we do to niggers down here. She told Williams told the Associated Press in one of her most extensive interviews since the shocking case made national headlines last month. Seated in a rocking chair in her mother's living room, 
about 50 miles from that shed, the slight woman with cocoa colored skin said she was hopelessly outnumbered by people who just wanted to hurt a black person. I hope I just hope they fry for what they did to me. That's really all I got to say. I hope they fry. Still, Williams and her family want more. They want the case prosecuted as a hate crime, something authorities have stopped has so far stopped short of doing. And family, that's going to be uh, part one for now. And I'm going to bring you guys part two shortly. Of course, I'll upload the two videos back to back. And of course, you know, I got something to say about this uh, failure to bring a hate crime charge. So anyway, peace, love and power family. Uh, just tune in to part two right after part one out.